Good day everyone, we are group 7 and we are here to present Virginia Henderson's nursing need theory. The members of group 7 are Anselin Castillo, Abigail de los Santos, Marjorie Mallorca and Sharon Silva. The objectives of this presentation is to identify Virginia Henderson's theory, understand the major concepts of Henderson's theory, recognize and appreciate the assumptions of her theory, and discuss the 14 basic human needs and apply Henderson's theory based on the given clinical scenario. To understand more of our presentation, we begin with the nursing need theory discussed by one of our colleagues. Hi everyone, my name is Abigail de los Santos and I'm discussing the nursing need theory. So the nursing need theory was developed by Virginia A. Henderson to define the unique focus of the nursing practice. The theory focuses also on the importance of increasing the patient's independence to hasten their progress in the hospital. Henderson's theory also emphasizes the basic human needs and how nurses can assist in meeting those needs. So the brief um, background for Virginia Henderson. Virginia Henderson was born in March 1987 and died in November 30, 1996. She had her own definition of nursing, which is Nursing is primarily assisting the individual, the sick or well, in the performance of those activities, contributing to health or its recovery or peaceful death, that would perform unaided if he had the unnecessary will or knowledge. Her definition of nursing is important to nurses, especially on the acute care nurses, who play an active role and are concerned with taking care of patients' needs and assisting them with um, ADLs. Um, even the sick or the incapacitated patients. So nurses are also crucial instruments for dying patients to have peaceful death and consoling the loved ones during the inevitable situation. It is also important in the academic and in the realm of nursing research. The Henderson background, she was considered the 20th century Florence Nightingale. Henderson was also born in the King's Kansas City, Missouri. She is the fifth child in a family of eight children and lived mostly in Virginia. Henderson's interest in nursing evolved during the World War I and she enrolled in the Army School of Nursing in Washington, D.C. and graduated in 1921. In 1926, she began the continuation of her education at Columbia University Teacher College and completed Bachelor of Science in 1932 and Master of Degree in Nursing Education in 1934. The need theory or the nursing need theory uh, was developed by Virginia Henderson and it emphasizes the importance of increasing the patient's independence so that the progress after hospitalization would not be delayed. She also categorized activities into 14 components based on the human needs. She described the nurse's role as substitutive, which is doing for the person, supplementary, helping the person, complementary, working to the person, with the goal of helping the person to become independent as possible. So the 14 components of Virginia Henderson needs theory show a holistic approach in nursing and was uh, divided into physiological, psychological, moral or spiritual, and social. So for the physiological needs, it is the physiological components. It covers the first nine components, which are breathe normally, eat and drink adequately, eliminate body waste, move and maintain desirable postures, sleep and rest, also, select suitable clothes, dress and undress, and keep the body clean and well groomed and protect the integument. For the psychological aspect of communicating and learning, it includes the tenth component, which is communicate with others in expressing emotions, needs, fears, or opinions. It also includes the fourteen components, which is to learn and discover or satisfy the curiosity that leads to normal development. For the spiritual and moral, it includes the worship according to one's faith, 
and for the sociological oriented to occupation or recreation, it includes the 12 and the 13 component, which are work in such a way that there is a sense of accomplishment and also play or participate in various forms of recreation. For Henderson's four major concepts, she divided her concept into four, which are the nurse, the client, the environment, and health. For the individual, it requires assistance to achieve health and independence or a peaceful death. It is also the mind and body are inseparable and interrelated. Henderson also considers the biophysical and psychological, sociological, and spiritual components. And also the theory presents the patient as a sum as a part and a biosocial needs. For the environment, it is a setting that an individual learns a unique pattern of living. So she described it as all external conditions and influence that affect the life and development. Basic needs to care involves providing conditions under which a patient can perform the 14 activities unaided. For the health, she based it on the individual ability to function independently as outlined in the 14 components. Good health is a challenge and it is affected by age, the cultural background, physical and intellectual capacities, and emotional balance is the ability to meet these needs independently. The last component is the nursing. It's temporarily, assi temporarily assisting an individual who lacks the necessary strength, will, and knowledge to satisfy the basic body needs. It also assists and supports the individual in life activities and the attainment of independence. And lastly, the nurse is expected to carry out the physician's therapeutic plan and the individualized care is the nurse's activity, creativity, and planning of care. Hello everyone, I'm Angeline and I'm going to discuss the assumptions of Virginia Henderson, the need theory. And the independence is valued, not independence. This means that independence is promoted and encouraged. Nexus health has a meaning shared by society at large. This composed of ages, dif different social and cultural backgrounds, and have the same universal need, and everyone plays a part in contributing to the wellness of each and everyone, thereby creating a society, a healthy society. So this means this con condition should be addressed for the welfare of all the citizens. Next is the patient desire to return to health or peaceful death and will act in such a way to achieve this by working towards to the desire of the patient's will. Next is the individual's will to perform activities lead leading to health if they have the knowledge by providing assistance and health teaching for the patient's need till uh, independence develops. Next is the individual goal and the nurse goal are congruent. This means this is forming a common goal with the client and then next is the 14 basic needs represents the nursing basic function accordingly, according to this theory. It's, it is important to meet the 14 needs for optimal health. Next is the nursing goal may be subdued into uh, subsumed into the medical treatment plan according to Virginia Henderson. So um, collaboration with the medical treatment plan address the needs of the patients. So and Virginia Henderson emphasized the treatment according to the patient's needs. The next is the nurse is an independent practitioner. So the nurse can in initiate activities on his or on her own by aiding the patient in attaining the 14 needs in ways unnecessary of a physician's order. For case scenario, we begin with client R, 96 years old female, with long-standing history of diastolic heart failure and macular degeneration and low vision, admitted to long-term care after she was unable to manage at home independently, 
She was not coping with activities of daily living. She was too feeble to walk with imbalanced gait, lost interest in self-care, and refused to participate in hygiene care such as dressing, hair brushing, and face washing. She was not willing to interact and discuss her feelings. The nurse assigned check on client R and see if she has taken her food. The nurse saw client R barely touching her food and resisted eating. She has limited food intake and developed dehydration and irritability and insomnia as evidenced by dry mouth, sunken eyes with dark circles around, and the case was managed by applying Virginia Henderson's theory into the nursing care plan. For a client assessment, history of long standing of heart failure and macular degeneration and low vision. There is imbalanced gait. There's lost interest in self care and refused to participate in hygiene care such as dressing, hair brushing, and face washing. She's not willing to interact and discuss her feelings. She has limited intake and developed dehydration and irritability and insomnia as evidenced by dry mouth, sunken eyes, with dark circles around. Next intervention, um, since Mrs. R has imbalanced gait and has macular degeneration that may lead to poor vision, as a nurse, it is necessary to assess uh, Mrs. R stability and mobility skills. Um, we could also include the physiotherapist, occupational therapist, and social worker to do risk assessment to her place to ensure that the patient is safety. And if Mrs. R needs mobility devices such as cane and walker, we could also ensure that the there are sufficient lightning for the patient to carry out her activities. The rationale of this nursing intervention are based on the fourth and ninth component of nursing with theory. Um, it is very helpful to determine the client functional ability and the plan for ways to improve the problem. Also, having adequate lighting may help to improve vision and prevent fall and injury to occur. Next nursing intervention is because Mrs. R is suffering from insomnia, as a nurse, we have to assess her usual sleeping pattern and implement some measure to promote sleep, such as reducing environment destruction like noise, relief and discomfort, making sure that Mrs. R is in pain and encouraged to use relaxation activities such as doing deep breathing exercises or listening to classical music. Next. Since the patient is not willing to interact and discuss her feeling, our nursing intervention for that is to encourage Mrs. R to verbalize and explain or express her feeling, thoughts, perception, and fear. This intervention is based on the 10th component, which is the communication with other by uh, Henderson Needs Theory. Open and empathetic communication is important to reduce stress and anxiety and help the patient to cope up with her condition. The patient lost her interest in self-care and refused us to participate in hygiene care. Our group come up with a nursing intervention to encourage her to participate in self-care such as dressing, hair brushing, face washing and interperse period of activity with rest. This intervention are based on the third, six, seven, and eight component of nursing with duty. Um, involving the patient is per in performing activity of daily living will help promote independence and will promote sense of accomplishment. Next. Since the patient is not willing to interact and discuss her feeling, our nursing intervention for that is to encourage Mrs. R to verbalize and explain or express her feeling, thoughts, perception, and fear. This intervention is based on the 10th component, which is the communication with other by uh, Henderson Needs 
theory. Open and empathetic communication is important to reduce stress and anxiety and help the patient to cope up with her condition. The patient lost her interest in self-care and refused to participate in hygiene care. Our group come up with a nursing intervention to encourage her to participate in self-care such as dressing, hair brushing, face washing, and interperse period of activity with rest. This intervention are based on the third, sixth, seven and eight component of nursing with duty. Um, involving the patient is per in performing activity of daily living will help promote independence and will promote sense of accomplishment. Hi everyone, my name is Sharon Silva and I'm going to discuss about the client evaluation. So after thorough interventions, the client was able to verbalize her concerns. She showed willingness to join into programs and activities and she was able to walk on her own with assistive device like a walker. She performed activities of daily living, the personal care especially with minimal assistance. And she was seen dining with fellow residents and eating her meal with delight. For our conclusion, the new theory of Henderson plays a relevant role to clinical setting. It serves as a framework for the nurses to recognize caring needs of the client and be able to deliver it. It is an essential tool for experienced nurses to gather reliable and valid data about the health condition. It is applicable to the different dimensions of the client-nurse relationship. And lastly, it provides a holistic care for the patient. This is our presentation, and I hope that you have a knowledgeable and fun experience with us. And if you have any suggestions and recommendations, feel free to email us or to our teacher. In behalf of Group 7, I would like to say thank you and have a nice day.